Hello and welcome to today's talk on common ENT presentations that you may see uh, when you're on call or in the acute clinic. Today we're going to be talking about uh, epistaxis and nasal trauma. Before you start seeing the patient, things that you uh, will or might need include a headlamp, uh, a nasal speculum, uh, you want to make sure that you've got gloves and apron obviously, uh, the blue spray which is a lidocaine 5% with phenylephrine, uh, silver nitrate cautery sticks, um, you want to make sure that you've got rapid rhino packs at hand and both anterior and the anterior and posterior packs combinations. Um, you want to have a suction tube both broad and fine for more severe bleeds and um, you want to have cotton wool or either 2cm by 2cm gauze You'll need some Tilly's forceps and you may also need uh, a ribbon gauze and Foley catheter for more tricky bleeds. So uh, when assessing these sorts of patients, you're going to need a few things from the history. So you want to rule out any local causes, which include uh, things like nose picking, especially in children, but don't rule that out in adults. Any trauma, infection, uh, look for any signs of any tumours. Or, any, or it can just be uh, down to idiopathic causes. Systemic causes include uh, patients suffering from hypertension, those taking anticoagulants, those on non-steroid anti-inflammatories, coagulopathies that the patients may be suffering from, or hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. When examining the patient, you'll need to identify the signs of bleeding. Uh, be sure to look at uh, Little's area or Kiesel Black's plexus. Um, and as well, if you can see, can't see any bleeding from there, it may be further back, in which case it would be a posterior bleed. Um, you'll want to check for any post nasal bleeding or oral pharyngeal drip. Um, if you're unable to identify the site of bleeding due to a blood buildup, then you'll need to use um, suction to uh, remove any clots. Um, and especially uh, be sure to check the oropharynx to remove uh, any at the back of the mouth. When assessing patients with acute epistaxis that are actively bleeding, you want to make sure that they're adequately resuscitated. So you want to check for BP, heart rates, assess for any signs of pallor. In managing patients with anterior bleed, um, first, uh, manage with direct pressure on the fleshy part of the nose. Lean the patient forward to avoid um, them swallowing any blood. So if you can't, this can't be managed with direct pressure, then um, you want to move on to nasal cautery. To do this, identify any signs of bleeding. You'll want to numb the area with the blue spray first. And you can do this by um, soaking a piece of gauze or cotton wool in the blue spray itself and then inserting it into the nostril over the bleeding point with some Tilly's forceps. This has the added benefit of providing tamponade on the bleeding area at the same time. Leave this in for at least one minute before you remove this nasal packing and make sure that you've got your silver nitrate um, sticks ready. You want to caution the patient that they may get some staining of the skin and that there is a risk of nasal perforation. Be sure to make sure that you don't cauterize both sides of the septum uh, at the same time as this has a risk of causing perforation itself. In most patients, you can discharge them with naseptin cream four times a day for 10 days. However, in patients with peanut allergy, be sure to avoid this and consider using Bactroban cream instead as an alternative. In patients that can't be managed with nasal cautery, then you're going to need to move on to nasal packing. This will usually involve inserting a rapid rhino. To do this, you'll need to remove the rapid rhino from its packing and soak it in, wa soak it in water for 30 seconds. Insert the rapid rhino to ensure that the rapid rhino is angled horizontally and inserted to its end. Gently inflate the rapid rhino to provide nasal tamponade. This is usually between 5 to 10 millimeters of air. You want to secure the tail of the rapid rhino to the patient's face using tape and be sure to assess the oropharynx for any further signs of posterior bleeding. If the bleeding is ongoing at this stage, then you may need to contact the ENT registrar. In patients whose epistaxis doesn't resolve with anterior nasal packing or difficult posterior bleeds, then 
you may need to deal with this by packing with a Foley catheter and cores. What you'll want to do is insert the Foley catheter and inflate the balloon so that's occluding the postnasal space and then using a forceps insert ribbon gauze into the nasal cavity itself. You want to ensure that the catheter and the ribbon gauze is secured to the nose. Now in reviewing patients in the emergency clinic you may encounter them with uh, those that present with chronic epistaxis. So when taking a history from these patients you want to ensure that you rule out whether it's which left or right nostril or both, how long this has been going on for, uh, how often, whether there's any comorbidities, any hypertension, cancer, either solid tumours or otherwise, infections on any other past history of coagulopathies and you want to make sure that there's not any uh, blood thinners or anticoagulants. Examine the nose as you would looking for any prominent blood vessels and if you identify these, use the silver nitrate cautery as uh, you would in acute management. Of all of these patients, uh, naseptin cream four times a day for 10 days to be applied to the affected nostril. Uh, all patients with, uh, who've gone, undergone cautery will need either naseptin or Bactroban cream. Again, use naseptin first line, but if there's a history of a peanut allergy, uh, use Bactroban cream. If no blood vessels are identified and you're still concerned, um, and if they've got any risk factors for nasopharyngeal cancers, you'll need to discuss with the on-call registrar, maybe consider uh, a nasal endoscopy. In patients that uh, have a history of nasal trauma, uh, red flags that you want to be aware of are any uh, base of skull fractures, so look out for any uh, evidence of CSF rhinorrhea, any signs of septal hematoma, in which case you'll need to admit them and discuss with the ENT registrar, and look at our video on uh, managing septal hematomas. If there's uncontrolled epistaxis, you'll need to treat uh, as above and how we previously dealt with this. In patients with uncomplicated nasal bone fractures, you want to see them in a week's time, but no later than two weeks. Uh, book them into the emergency clinic, and if you discuss with them, just explain to them that you'll need to see them after the um, swelling has gone down. Useful resources on epistaxis and nasal trauma include uh, ENT SHO and the Oxford Handbook of the ENT and Head and Neck Surgery. Alright, thank you guys.